my name is Steve welcome back to my shop this video is going to be on the use and care of the precision ground flat stones I have been grinding these stones and have sent out several lots of them and in fact that's what I'm doing most of my shop time lately has been grinding precision ground stones and although Robin Ranzetti has an excellent video on how to use and how to take care of the stones. I d decided that since I'm making the stones and selling them that I should have a short video that covers the, the care, use, and the maintenance of the stones. So in this video what I'm going to use uh, I'm going to use several of my precision instruments as guinea pigs if you will for the use of the stones but I recently purchased some one two three blocks they're used uh, it was a set of four and they were represented by the seller as possibly being shop made I strongly disagree with that not that it makes any difference they're they are very well made blocks I don't think they're Chinese I have no way of proving it but uh, they do have a little bit of surface rust and staining on them and it's my intention to clean them up and eventually surface grind them to make sure that they are as accurate as possible. So right now what I'm going to do is clean them up the best that I can before I use the precision stones. One of the things that you want to make sure is that the items that you're stoning don't have oil or grease or dirt, uh, particularly rust on them because the stones end up loading up with that material and it requires a lot of extra cleaning so what I'm doing with these stones now first thing I did is that I went over them with a uh, single edge razor blade and took off looked like they might have had some tape or something on them at one point and it looked like there might have been some adhesive so I went over them and cleaned everything off the best that I could with a single edge razor blade. The next thing that I did is that I used one of these soft scotch bright, but it's a real fine pad. And I just went over them quickly and to remove any of uh, the rust and get down to the point that the only rust that I can see now is virtually staining. I'm going to put them in some rust solution and I've got a bucket here somewhere. Oh, here it is. And I'm going to put them in and let them soak for a little while in the rust removing solution. A lot of people are using the Evapo Rust, very similar product that I picked up at my local hardware store, Rust Remover Soak by WD-40. I don't know whether they still make it or not. I've been using this for a while and it's still working. I've got just about enough left here to cover up the stones. So I'm going to leave them soak for a little while and then we'll come back and I'm going to show you how to use the precision ground stones. This was the worst one here. Uh, they're cleaning up, so I'll let them soak overnight, see how they look in the morning. Uh, 
Now these one, two, three blocks have been soaking now for 24 hours. So I'm going to take them out and clean them up. Looks like they're cleaning up pretty good. But since this uh, video is not about rust removal, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to finish cleaning these up and then we'll come back when the, they're all ready to, to work on. I'll see you in a few minutes. One of the primary uses of the precision ground flat stones is to stone off precision surfaces. And what I have done, I already showed you, I, I de-rusted these. There was a little bit of rust on them. I, they cleaned up okay. The other thing that I did is that I uh, used some acetone and I cleaned them off with acetone to make sure that all the oil is off of them. Because the oil, the grease and the dirt will load up the stones. So I'll use either rubbing alcohol or acetone and since I'm out of alcohol right now acetone is, is the thing. So what I'm going to do now is take one of my stones and I rub them together. The more you use them, the more you, you flatten them out, the better they are. And I'm just going over all these blocks to see if I can find if there are any nicks on the edges. And you can feel it when when you and you'll also be able to see it. So far, these are, are these are pretty flat. And I'm going over all the surfaces. And what I'm going to do is after I have them all stoned off. I'm going to take them over to my surface plate and check them for size. Now, if there was a nick or something on the bottom of it, it wouldn't sit right on the surface plate, and so I would get a false reading. So that's why I'm stoning them all before I take them over to the surface plate. The other thing I do is rub the stones together. Oh, here it is here. Let's get back in the picture here rub them together in between Which keeps them nice and flat Now what you need to keep in mind is that you're not actually removing any material from the overall surface all you're doing is removing high spots or burrs And I don't know whether you'd be able to see this or not. See if I can see it. on the edges they're a little bit high and they're a little shinier than the rest of the surface. So I know that it's not that is not perfectly flat and so I'm going over and cleaning them up and I've started to pick up these edges and I've started to pick up the center so I, I know I'm getting pretty flat and then I'll take and rub them together again now this piece here is a uh, it's a planar gauge that I picked up recently and I can actually feel that it's got 
a few nicks along the edges. So I could also feel it's got a little bit of oil on it. So I'm going to take and uh, take my acetone and I'm going to clean it down a little bit. Get the oil and the dirt off of it so that I don't contaminate my stones. And I'll take a nice flat, make sure I'm flat, and stone off the bottom. You can hear, I can hear that, and what that is, the, uh, the previous owner of this etched their name in it, and it raised up a little bit, and you can see it right in there, There's a, and you can actually feel that. Now, if I wanted to get that perfectly square, what I can do is take and just put a little extra pressure on it. I'm putting a little extra pressure on just that small area. And now that's that's nice and flat. I'm going to turn it over. I can feel a couple of nicks on the edges as I'm going across it. You may be able to even hear it. And we'll go back and clean it off again. A couple of new squares are not brand new, but they're uh, squares that I picked up. These are more and right squares. I just I haven't done anything to them yet. So I'm going to clean them off with the acetone. This belonged to Phil. His name is etched in it. I enjoy working with tools with other people's names on it. It kind of connects me to other machinists. I have some of the tools that I work with that I got from my original collection belonged to my grandfather. And I know I've talked about that. And... I get a special feeling when I'm working with tools that I know that he he worked with. I've also put together one of a smaller set of stones here. I'm going to use that I'm just real careful not to roll the edges to keep it nice and flat. But I can see that there are a few high spots along the edges that I'm removing. I can definitely feel it on this side. But if I want the square to be accurate, when I set it on something, I don't want a nick or a burr holding it out of square so it's important that all the surfaces be stoned off this had that whole edge that's where it's been used is was high and now the whole thing is flattening off and I'm picking up the center and the both edges so I know I'm getting it down flat. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but there's actually a nick in that that I'm feeling. You can
So anyway, I pretty much go over all of my precision instruments on a, on a regular basis and you know before I use a square I take it out of the toolbox I'll uh, I'll stone it the other thing we want to talk about is actually the care of the stones and you can see this one has got some build up some crud that one's pretty dirty um, I've cleaned the rest of them but I left this one for my demonstration so Robin Renzetti takes and puts them in an ultrasonic cleaner which is a great idea and I would do that but I don't have an ultrasonic cleaner so what I do I use the either the acetone or uh, rubbing alcohol and in this case I've got acetone today to, to work on it I use a just a coarse towel and soak it with the acetone and I'm cleaning the majority of that off This one particular set of stones, this small one, was actually one of the first sets that I ever ground. And I was still kind of getting the hang of it and the procedures. And I'm probably, even though it works fine, I'm probably going to actually touch this set up and regrind it. Uh, because since I did this one, I've started grinding them with a much smaller uh, step over as I'm going over them and then rub them together again the acetone dries out real quick and they're nice and smooth now the other thing and I'm gonna try and zoom in on this and, and see if I can pick it up or not let's see if we lose it the uh, okay I don't really have any good way of magnifying this but I think you can see right there there's actually some material and that one's fairly big and if you get a lot of that on the stones it starts loading up the stones what you can do I'm using my Randy Richards scribe right now which has got a nice sharp point and I can actually go in and there it is pick that out of there that's pretty well gone now still a little shiny spot there but the the actual piece of metal is, has popped out of there and then I'll, oops I can feel it on there there it goes it's gone you can actually feel it when uh, when you have contamination between them I don't know whether you can see it on this one or not but I'm starting to get some shiny spots on that but they're they're pretty tiny and I'm not even gonna go after them but the, the one was a little bit bigger of course that's the, uh, the fine side you can do the same thing on the coarse side if you've got pieces that are a little rough, rougher shape, uh, I'll use the coarse side on the bed of my uh, milling machine when I'm setting up the vise. I'll go over it with the coarse side first because the chances are that any of the burrs or dings are going to be a little bit larger on that. And then after I do it with the coarse side, I'll do it with the fine side. You can hear the difference as you. That's nice and smooth now. Uh, to the coarse side on this is probably going to sound a little rough because I haven't used these for a while. See that? And as they they grind in, get nice and smooth.
So you can hear that. They're nice and smooth now. And the other thing that I do is that I check them for flat. If they hinge out right on the end, if they were to hinge out here right on the end, that would mean that those ends of the stone are high. Or if it hinged just in, in the middle, it would mean that the center was high. But these, the way they are right now, they're hinging right here and right here which is about a third of the way in, which means that that is dead on flat. And that's one thing that I do check on a regular basis. And when I send any of the stones out, I make sure that they're matched and that they're hinging properly when I ship them out. Well, that's going to wrap up this video. I hope that I've answered most of your questions with regard to the use and care of the precision ground flat stones. If you have any other questions or comments, please leave them in the uh, comment section of the video. I'll be happy to answer them. See you in the next video.